الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى عليك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله صلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى عليك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel there are many blessings of reciting through the path of Rasulullah Indeed, the Prophet of mankind, the peace of our hearts and minds, the most generous, the most kind, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa has stated, Undoubtedly, Allah Azza wa has stationed an angel at my grave who has been granted the power of hearing the voice of every creature. Hence, whoever, wherever in the world, until the day of judgment, recites salat through the path upon me, the angel hears it and presents the name of that person together with the name of his father in my court. The angel says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so and so, the son of so and so, has recited Salat upon you. Subhanallah. My dear respected brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, how fortunate is the person who recites through the Park upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If today somebody was to tell us, that your name was taken in an, a very auspicious gathering, in a gathering of the king. If your name was mentioned in the court of the king, how happy would you be? Can you imagine the status of the person whose name is mentioned in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And then, the scholars also write that if we look at this beautiful hadith in Mubarakah, then if an angel stationed at the door at the, in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has the power to hear the durood of salam, the recitation of salat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of millions of Muslims all over the world and recognizes that person and knows the name of his father. Can you imagine the hearing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and can you imagine the ilm al of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu My dear respected brothers and viewers of Mutton Channel, today we're going to embark upon a, a very amazing journey because we're going to try and change our lives. There is one fundamental thing that we all do, no matter who he is. We all do this act many times a day. And yet we do not think about it. We do not think how we do it. We do not consider our actions. We consciously and subconsciously just carry on doing this act and gaining the worldly benefits from it. But with a little bit of attention and a little bit of knowledge, we can take this everyday task and we can turn it into a worship of Allah Azza Food is a great divine favor of Allah Azza Our taste buds that we've been granted with, how would the world be? How would food be if we couldn't taste it? Everything would taste the same. Whether you ate something that was bland and tasteless or something which is colorful and tasteful, if you didn't have the taste buds that Allah Azzawajal has granted us, then there'd be no good to it. So this great gift of Allah, this taste, and the great favor of Allah, this food that we have, is without doubt a great blessing. And then on top of that, it is an act of great reward to eat halal food with good intentions, and conforming to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Now this is an act, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of the Madni channel, we do all the time. 
we get up in the morning, we have breakfast, we have lunch, we have the evening meal, some of us snack during the day. We just imagine that if we aligned our actions in accordance with the Sharia and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu and turn this act of eating into an act of worship, how much reward would we gain? A renowned commentator of the Quran, Mufti Ahmed Yarkhan alayhi rahmatu rahman has stated, eating is also a form of worship for the Muslim. He goes on to say that this sunnah of eating is one that has been practiced by all the messengers of Allah Azza wa there are many blessings of eating in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shaykh Sayyidina Imam Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi says that when a Muslim eats the first morsel of halal food, he is absolved of the sins he has committed in the past. His previous sins are forgiven. And yet what is he doing? He is just eating to satisfy his desires. Furthermore, the one who goes to a place of humiliation in search of halal sustenance, his sins fall like the leaves that fall from a tree. My dear Islam brothers, let's look at this very carefully. Because we are taking an act that we do all the time, but yet with a little attention, we can make it a way of filling our book of deeds with great reward. It is a sunnah, for example, to eat only when one is hungry. Aka sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us that we can make many intentions. And there is a beautiful hadith in Mubarakah, إِنَّ مَا الْأَعْمَعِلُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ The reward of these depends upon the intentions. And نِيَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عَمِلِهِ The intention of a believer is better than his actions. The greater the intention, the greater the reward. The better the intention, the higher the reward. So if you sit down to eat, for example, with the intention that I'm eating in order to gain strength to worship Allah. Just that one intention changes the whole scenario. You're not eating for your own pleasure. You're not eating to satisfy your taste buds. But straight away, you have made the intention to eat so that you can gain strength to worship Allah. Shaykh Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Shaiban has stated, I have not eaten anything for the mere satisfaction of my nafs for 80 years. And yet today, we spend most of our time eating to just satisfy. We're not hungry, but we eat. But eating less than one's appetite is sunnah. As the intention of eating to gain strength for worship of Allah will be true only when one eats less than his appetite. Why? Because when we overeat, it actually hinders our worship. When you overeat, it makes you lazy. Eating less food actually keeps you on your feet. It gives you good health and such a person rarely becomes ill because he eats less. One of the biggest problems we have in today's society is that we are faced with diseases which are caused by overeating. Indeed, the Ulmaikram, the scholars of Dean write that the one who changes his habits and controls what he eats and eats in accordance to the sunnah and eats less because it is sunnah only to eat when it, one is hungry. Such a person rarely needs a doctor. And listen to this beautiful hadith in Mubarakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is noted in Sunan ibn Majah that Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated, man does not fill a container worse than his stomach. Merely a few morsels are sufficient for him to keep his back straight. If he cannot do so, then he should keep one-third of his stomach for food, one-third for water, and one-third for air. And yet, what do we do? We fill our stomach till we can hardly push in anymore. 
we make life so difficult for ourselves that some brothers, they have the intention to go to the masjid to pray Isha. Yet, when they come home, they eat so much that they become so lazy that they can't get up to go. We fill the stomach up to the brim. And then we pay a price for it. That little bit of pleasure that we gain is short-lived. The taste buds are firing and the food's going in without any control. But after we have eaten, we then make an intention that I've eaten too much, I will try and eat less next time. But then the next time the same thing happens. And this repeating over time, it causes problems in our stomach, causes problems in our blood, in our health, cholesterol, etc. To the extent that then the doctor says, well, you are now prohibited from eating this, this, and this because you are now a diabetic or you are now, uh, you have high cholesterol and others. And then we regret it. That short term satisfaction of the nafs has now meant that long term we pay the price. But gosh, if we followed the sunnah of Rasulullah and controlled and enjoyed within proportion, with moderation, what we were granted, the gift of Allah Azza wa the food and the taste that we have, then we could have enjoyed it for longer. It's all about intentions. Making good intentions helps us. Sitting down and thinking what we're about to do helps us. We will be questioned on the day of judgment in relation to everything we do. Eating, drinking, sleeping, everything. So if we can make our acts in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu then these acts which we do to survive, even drinking water that we do to survive, if we bring them in accordance with the Qur'an and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then these become acts of worship and will help on the day of judgment. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Muslim channel, there are many, many intentions that one can make. And there could be hundreds. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Amir al-Sunnah, Damas Barakatum al has given us 43 things that we can think about before we sit down to eat. And then in, the, in this series, inshallah, we will explore a lot of them in more depth. But let me give you a quick synopsis of what is about to come. One of the intentions that we can make is to do wudu before and after eating. Then, we can make the intention that I will consume the food, I will eat to gain strength to worship Allah Azza to gain strength to read the Holy Quran, to gain strength to serve my parents, to gain strength to acquire religious knowledge, to gain strength to travel in the Madni Kaflas of Dawat Islami in order to learn the Sunnahs of Rasulullah Sallallahu to take part in the visits in the locality to call people to righteousness, to ponder upon the hereafter, to earn halal sustenance for me and my family, to meet my needs. Look at all these beautiful intentions you can make. Then you can make further intentions. That I will eat in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu I will eat sitting on the floor. So this is not the actual act. These are just the intentions you're making before. And you will gain reward for these intentions as well. Eating while sitting on the floor. Then using a dining mat in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then observing veil within veil. So using a, a, a mantle to cover yourself. So that when you sit, you're not exposed. To sit in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa To recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Other du'as before consuming food, to eat with three fingers in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to eat small morsels, to chew the food properly, to recite ya wajidu before eating every morsel, or bismillah ya wajidu before every morsel and alhamdulillah after you've eaten it. Picking up the bits of food that drop on the, on the tablecloth and then eating it. 
breaking every morsel of bread over the curry so that any bits that fall off fall into there and don't go to waste. Licking bones properly and cleaning them. Eating less than your appetite. Wiping the plate clean with the intention of acting upon sunnah. Licking the fingers clean three times. Pouring water into the plate and drinking it, making sure all the food is come. And earning the reward of freeing a slave. My dear respected brothers, there are many, many intentions that we can make. There are many, many benefits that we can learn. When eating, there is so much respect in the way that we have been taught by the scholars. One of the etiquettes that we learn is that when you sat with your elders, the pious people of Allah and the scholars, then you should allow them to start and never start eating before them. Today, there is a, 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 an urge to eat alone. The blessing is eating in the company of Muslims. Today, we don't like to offer things. But the sunnah way is to offer that which you like to others. My dear respected Islamic brothers, eating is a whole science. And eating in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is essential knowledge that if we learnt it and acted upon it, then we would fill our book of deeds with great rewards every time we sat down to eat. Let me give you an example, moving into the different intentions that we could make. You remember that the first one I mentioned is making wuzu before you eat and after you eat. The wuzu of eating is not like the wuzu of salah. Wuzu of eating is washing both hands up to and including the wrists and rinsing the mouth so that your mouth is nice and clean and your hands are clean. Now, I'll explain the benefits of this. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas reports that Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, making wudu before and after eating protects against destitution and is one of the sunnats of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at this. Today we complain that, it, that what we earn isn't enough for us and that we don't make enough. But Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us that if you do this simple act of washing your hands up to and including your wrist and you rinse your mouth, this will bring barakat and blessings to your food. Sayyidina Anas has narrated that Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated, anybody who wishes that Allah azza wa jal increases goodness in his home, should make wudu when food is served as well as when it is removed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Just by performing this act and acting upon this sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are bringing goodness and blessings to your home. And then, the mother of the believers, Aisha Siddiqa Radiyallahu has narrated that Raka Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, to make wudu before eating is one good deed and to make wudu after eating Eating is equivalent to two good deeds. Today we get lazy. We get lazy, we can't be bothered, we're sitting down and we just want to throw the food down. You know when we're hungry, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of the Madni channel, the shaitan and the nafs are playing with us and they don't want us to act upon the sunnah of Rasulullah and we're desperate and we want to put our hands in and throw it in. It's at that stage that we need patience. It's at that stage that you say, no, I'm going to eat. It's going to come. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to gain benefit from it. Now, I will fill this desire. But while doing that, if I did it in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then I will gain reward also. The desire will still be fulfilled. But I will gain the reward from this simple act of eating. Therefore, I'm going to control myself. And then on the day of judgment, each good deed that we gain by changing our eating habits we will realize because no one deed can be held to be light. It may be that one deed which is justification for our salvation on the day of judgment. Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also stated that making wuzu before and after eating, eye washing the hands and mouth, as I say, increases one's sustenance and keeps the shaitan away. So before we recap, just 
washing the hands and rinsing the mouth. And look at the benefits that you get. It protects against destitution in accordance with the first hadith of Barakah that I read. It increases goodness in your home in accordance with the second hadith of Barakah that I said. And then for every time you wash your hands before, you get one good deed. And when you wash after, you get two good deeds. And Akas sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it increases your sustenance and keeps the shaitan away. Subhanallah. Look at the blessings of acting in accordance with the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then it, it, it's much more than that as well. Because you are saving yourself from diseases. If you eat with dirty hands, all the germs will go in. Yet, if you eat after having washed your hands properly, then alhamdulillah you are protected from a lot of things. There is a, 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 a narration, a, a story of a, a truck driver who went to a restaurant and if he ate food there, and within a short time, he died of withering pain. The people, there were other people who had eaten at the restaurant, but they were fine. So when the investigation was carried out, they realized that he was a truck driver. And that during the journey, he had cr crossed a snake. And the tires of the truck had gone over a snake and killed it. And at some point, while checking the tires of the truck, he had passed his hand over the tires. And the venom of the snake had come onto his hand. Now, when he sat down to eat without washing his hands, the venom went inside him and killed him. Yet, one acts in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah and make sure that he washes his hands thoroughly before he eats. And we can protect ourselves from unfortunate incidents like this and from diseases that we pick up on our hands all the time. My dear respected Islamic brothers, today we develop a lot of bad habits. Today our eating habits have become so poor that we live by takeaway food. We live by fast food. And that brings with it trouble. It is food that's very badly often prepared. Indeed, Sheikh Sayyidina Imam Zarnuji has stated, if possible, one should refrain from eating junk food and market food as it takes one closer to filth and fraud and distances one from the zikr of Allah. There are many, many restaurants now open. And one of the difficulties, my dear Islamic brothers, is this. Not only is the food not prepared in the proper way, but also these places have music and all sorts of difficulties and impurities which we are faced with when we go to eat there. It's very difficult to protect one's eyes and one's ears when visiting these places. So this is why the scholars say that you should avoid these places. Food should be consumed in private places. You should avoid watching TV, dramas, music, etc. You should avoid sitting in restaurants where there is music. We have no control over the fact that they play music, but we do have control over where we go to eat, my dear Islamic brothers. And that's where we should be careful. Sayyidina Alama Shami, Rahmatullah alayhi, narrated that all these things, the practices of listening to music and musical instruments, etc., are all haram. If one suddenly hears them unintentionally, it is wajib for him to make every possible effort to avoid listening to it. Hazrat Sayyidina Nafi has stated, when I was young, I was going somewhere with Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar and on the way we heard the sound of a trumpet being blown. Hazrat Abdullah immediately put his fingers into his ears and moved to the other side of the road. Thereafter he asked, Nafi, can you still hear the sound of the trumpet? I replied, no. Then taking his fingers out of the openings of his ears, he said, once I was going somewhere with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he, Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did exactly the same as I have done now. Allahu Akbar. So you see that Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
dislikes music. How can one have blessing in his food if one is eating it in an environment which is filled with wrongdoing? If it is filled with screens where there is wrong thing being shown, when it is filled with music, etc., isn't it better, my dear respected brothers and viewers of Midland Channel, to eat in the privacy of your own home? Isn't it better to eat where there are nuts playing in the background? Isn't it better to eat and talk about the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. There are many blessings of eating in the home. You know, today we have a problem. And that problem is this. That our children will take the plate and they will go upstairs into the bedroom and eat. The father will sit in front of the television and eat. The mother will be in the kitchen eating. And the families don't eat together. And they lose a lot of blessings because they don't eat together. Today, we, as a family unit, we fight the blessings away by being individuals. Parents don't spend time with their children. And then they complain when the children go off onto the wrong path. Hazrat Amir al muminin Sayyidina Umar Farooq has narrated that Raqqa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has stated, Eat together, do not eat separately, as blessing is with the group. Subhanallah. There are glad tidings for those who eat together on a dastakhan in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Anas bin Malik narrated, when Allah azza wa jal sees a Muslim eat at a dining mat, sitting along with his wife and children, he azza wa jal likes it the most because when they sit together to eat, Allah Azza wa sees them with mercy and forgives them before they separate. Look at the beauty we get when we sit and eat with family. Eating brings the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. There are many, many blessings that we can gain just by changing our habits. And one of the things that we can do to increase the madri environment in our home is that we can start to teach our children in the sunnahs of Rasulullah And one beautiful way of doing this is to give dars from faizan sunnah in your home. You know, if we teach our children the right thing, they will not go outside and learn the wrong thing because they will have a sound grounding. If every day the parents spend time with their children teaching them the sunnahs of Rasulullah and the love of Rasulullah then Alhamdulillah, those children will be blessed with a strong iman. Let me give you a beautiful narration. There was a, a brother from Okala, a state in India. And he says, due to the religious company of the wrong people, my family were briskly falling into an abyss of sins and wrongful beliefs. Once, while the entire family was watching TV, my 17-year-old brother, who had began to attend the Dawati Islami Istama entered the room with his back towards the television. He took something from the room and then left in a similar manner. I was infuriated by his strange behavior. He didn't want to look at the television because he felt that the wrong thing was on. We yelled at him, we shouted at him. What's wrong with you? Why are you being childish? Despite our harsh words, this brother went to his room silently and did not respond. Explaining to my mother he said that he had given up television. In anger, I stopped talking to him. He started giving dars from Fezani Sunnah in the home. Initially, I did not attend the dars. But one day, I also sat down with the rest of the household and began listening to it. I then began to attend regularly. Gradually, the rust of my heart began to be removed and I started attending the weekly Sunnah-inspired Ijtamaz of Dawit Islami. The local Islam I attended I came to my senses. I refrained from the company of the bad people. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I started to grow my beard. I started to listen to cassettes, Sunnah-inspired bayans released by Maqtabad al-Madina. And then televisions from all four rooms of our house were removed with mutual consent and thrown away. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Look at the beautiful effect giving dars from Faizan Sunnah house. Now today we'll feel shy. We'll get a newspaper article, we'll sit there with the family and we'll take them through it. 
even though it's something that our children shouldn't be hearing, we won't. But the shaitan and the nafs, when you take out the book, Faizan is sunnah, and you say, I'm going to read a little bit, I'm going to teach you a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu the shaitan will grab hold of you. My dear respected brothers and viewers of Muslim channel, these are our children. This is our house. These are your children. This is your house. And it's your responsibility to make sure that you change it. Why? Because let me read to you the ayat of the Quran in Surah Tahrim, part 28, verse 6, translation from Kanzul Iman. O oh, those who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire whose fuel is men and stones. One of the ways of carrying out the above mentioned commandment, the scholars write, is to give dars in the household. In addition, it would also be beneficial to read other booklets so that you gain Islamic knowledge. Now, in this ayah Mubarakah, it clearly says, save yourselves and your families. My dear Islamic brothers, it's very important that we save ourselves and we save our families. And one way of doing that is to attend the weekly Sunnah-inspired Ishtamaz of Dawit Islami ourselves and with our brothers and children, son. If they attend with you, Alhamdulillah, you will gain the blessings and learn the Sunnah of Rasulullah wasallam. Then, traveling in the beautiful Madni Kaflas of Dawit Islami, then watching Amir al-Sunnah Dawud al-Barakatum al amazing Madni Muzakri, which are on Saturday evenings. All these will help inspire the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in our heart and will give us the, the, the uh, zest and the zeal and the, the uh, strength and the enthusiasm to learn the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the more we increase in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the closer we are to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the easier it becomes to act upon the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Azza give us all the tawfiq to act upon the beautiful sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and give us the tawfiq to eat in accordance with the sunnah. Ameen. Bijahin Nabil Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islam is the way of life. Islam is the way of life.